Japanese car maker Toyota is laying off workers to offset the strong yen. And I asked Marshall Gittler from Deutsche Bank whether policymakers and exporters have accepted a level of 80 for the dollar yen. Well, I think they, first off, they have no choice. That's really where it's been, and it, it's pretty much stuck in a range right now. So I think it's going to be here for some time. Um, I think they've come to learn to live with it. The fact is, if you remember, uh, back in '95, it was around that level too. So actually, the yen isn't so that strong. Um, they, people are just looking at the nominal rate. The, the effective exchange rate is really quite a lot weaker because don't forget they have deflation, whereas the rest of the world has inflation. So in fact, dollar yen should be moving down every year uh, just to keep the rate the same, the, the effective rate the same. But it hasn't been. So I think uh, I think they can they can cope with this. But why doesn't the Bank of Japan and the Japanese government take the same points of view? Because you talk about uh, what the actual uh, nominal rate is. So why don't they take notice. I once went into the Ministry of Finance in Japan and I said exactly this, that same thing to them. And they said, well, Mr. Gittler, when the rest of the country thinks the same way you do, then we'll, we'll start thinking that way too. The fact is, that's just not the way people look at it. What they look at for the, for the exchange rate is dollar yen. The fact is, though, that a lot of Japanese companies are naturally hedged in dollar yen. They have their costs in dollars, they have a lot of their sales in dollars, uh, because a lot of them are made manufacturing in China, dollar yen isn't as important to them, I think, as euro yen, because that's where they really they make the, the profit. They're not naturally hedged in the euro. So that's that's hurt them a lot. Euro yen has come down a lot. Well, let's talk about dollar yen uh, briefly. Uh, once we fall below 80, which it seems like we will do eventually, as it's testing that level a lot at the moment, uh, when are we going to be start talking about intervention from the BOJ? I, I think 80 is uh, more or less a line in the sand. Well, I mean, it might go to 79 or whatever, but we, are, we understand that the G, G7 has really has given them the green light. They understand they've had a terrible, terrible natural disaster and they really have to do something. So it's not, I don't think anyone would complain if they, if they tried to put a floor under it around 80. And do you think it will be a unilateral intervention or would it be another G7 intervention? I think that G7 one was, was uh, perhaps a one-off thing, but I, I think they'd have the green, I, I expect that nobody would complain if they did unilateral intervention. Obviously, risk sentiment is extremely important for the yen as a safe haven currency. Are you seeing any signs globally that risk sentiment is improving? So obviously, we've got the Eurozone, worries about U.S. growth, uh, worries in the Middle East. Well, I think we here in, uh, in, in Geneva are the, the canary in the, in the mine shaft in that respect because the Swiss franc is now perhaps the, the major risk-sensitive currency and with Euro Swissy hitting a re record low just today, if I'm not mistaken, it's clear that uh, people are still worried. The domestic uh, industry in Japan is still obviously struggling uh, in, with the after effects of the earthquake and also the strong yen. Are you expecting Japanese companies to start moving production out of the country? Uh, they've been doing that for the last 10, 15 years or longer. Uh, there may be some that haven't done it yet, but I, I think that's, that trend was quite well established, the hollowing, the hollowing out trend. Uh, although uh, it, it may well be that now with the, the, with the renminbi rising, getting stronger, that uh, it isn't as attractive as it used to be. And don't forget, w what Japan is really good at is very high-tech, very precision th uh, items with really unique uh, technology embedded in them. And not all of that can be, be produced elsewhere. They've really got some unique skills there. We often talk about very negative things around the Japanese economy, like deflation, there's political, social problems now, obviously, after the, the, uh, the tsunami. Can we pick out some positive things about the Japanese economy, which might, which might push it forward over the next 12 months? Now, the Japanese economy, it's really hard to see many, many bright spots right now. People talk about the rebuilding, as a, but you know, they've had a very stimulative fiscal policy for the last uh, decade or two, and it hasn't, hasn't helped them. I think the real thing is the social policy. I think this, Japan has a, real, a long history of rallying together in times of crisis. What we've seen now is that really the citizens 
citizens are becoming much more responsible. They're, they really are rising up against the government and demanding better government because they're just appalled at what happened with, the, with this disaster and the way the government has played this nuclear event, the nuclear meltdown. So I think we're going to see stronger NGOs in Japan. We're going to see a much more active citizenry. And this may help to break down some of, some of the impediments to growth that have, be, that have become structuralized in Japan. The Geneva Forex event continues behind me, but for now, it's goodbye.